Hey guys, this is Miss Smith. I'm going to do your language review this week. So this looks a little different than what we're used to, but we are still covering the same grammar and reading skills that your other uh, language review pages went through. It's just formatted a little differently, so don't let that throw you off. All right, so with day one, or what you should have completed on Monday, the first box says, check the exclamatory sentence. Well, I know that an exclamatory sentence is going to be something that has very strong emotion, and it's going to end with an exclamation mark. So I have the horse galloped away, where are the pencils, don't touch the animals, or I love panda bears. Well, I'm looking at these different sentences here, and I see that the punctuation at the end of this last sentence right here is an exclamation mark. So I'm going to go ahead and check this one because I know that that's showing very strong emotion about how this person feels about pandas. All right, the next one would be check the interrogative sentence. So we have watch out below, wash your hands, the panda cub is cute, when is lunchtime? With an interrogative sentence, you are asking a question. So looking at the four sentences we have been given, when is lunchtime is the one that is asking something. All right, next one, check the imperative sentence. Well, I know that imperative sentences give some kind of command. They are telling someone to do something. So we have raccoons are nocturnal. Why are you laughing? Keep your hands back. That trick was amazing. Well, the one that is telling someone to do something is going to be this sentence right here. Keep your hands back. And the last one for day one, check the declarative sentence. So a declarative sentence is just declaring something. It's making some kind of statement. So we have, who is the best inventor? The treasure is hidden. Help your little brother. What a strange sight. All right, on this one, the treasure is hidden would be our declarative sentence because you are just stating something. You are saying that treasure is hidden. All right, for day two, or what you should have completed on Tuesday, our first box says underline the complete predicate and circle the simple predicate. Okay, so remember with the predicate, we are talking about the action of the sentence. So what our subject is doing. So it says to underline the complete predicate. My sentence says the howling wolves prowl the forest for their prey. Well, I know that the who or what, that would be the main focus of my sentence would be the wolves. So I need to figure out what the wolves are doing in order to figure out what my predicate is. So I'm going to underline prowl the forest for their prey because that would be the complete predicate. Now I need to circle the simple predicate. So I just want the one word that's telling me the action taking place. So in this case, the word that we would circle would be prowl. The next one says add punctuation to make this sentence correct. The art teacher bought paint brushes, clay, and paper for her classes. All right, so the art teacher bought paint. That's going to be one thing brushes, clay, paper. Those are all of the different things that the art teacher is buying. So we know that when we have items in a series, we're going to separate them with commas. So I'm putting a comma after paint, a comma after brushes, and a comma after clay. The next one asks us, what is the meaning of the underlined word? Okay, the previous year we had our most winning record. The word previous is underlined. So we are talking about a year that already happened. So the year before, or you could say the year prior. So it's not going to be the current year that you're in. It's going to be one in the past. And the last one for day two, we are determining if our statements are facts or opinions. Remember, with a fact, we are making a true statement. We are just giving information. An opinion is how you feel about something. So the first one says, they are so helpful and kind. Well, I know that this is going to be an opinion, and the reason for that is because I am using the word so helpful and kind. So this is how I feel about them. However, other people may not have that same feeling. 
So this is my opinion of the people I'm talking about in this sentence. The next one says the Colts won the Super Bowl in 2006. Well, I know this is a fact because I'm just giving a statement. I'm not telling how I feel about this or what I think about it. I'm simply giving information. All right, day three. This is what we should have done on Wednesday. The first one says underline the complete subject and circle the simple subject. Our sentence says the quirky and absent-minded professor lost his briefcase. All right, remember your subject is who or what the sentence is about. So if I'm looking for my complete subject, that would be all of this information. The quirky and absent-minded professor. That is who the sentence is talking about. Now I need to circle the simple subject. So I just want that person or thing. I don't want all of the adjectives to describe them. So the word that we are going to circle would be professor. The next one is an analogy, which we should be very familiar with. So we have pentagon is to five, octagon is to blank. Well, I know that a pentagon has five sides because I have this root right here, pent means five. So I, if I look at octagon, the root oct means eight. It has eight sides. So pentagon is to five, octagon is to eight. The next one, circle the common nouns in the sentence below. All right, remember a noun is a person, place, or thing. So it says a raccoon, squirrel, and rabbit visited our campsite in Yellowstone National Park. All right, well, the first one I see is a raccoon. Then I have squirrel, rabbit, and campsite. Now I would not circle Yellowstone National Park even though that is a place. It is going to be a proper noun because it is the specific name of that place. So we only want the common nouns. And our last one for day three, what type of figurative language is the following sentence? It says the leaves danced across the yard. We have simile, metaphor, hyperbole, or personification. Well, I know that this sentence is telling me what the leaves are doing. It says the leaves danced across the yard. I know that leaves really can't dance, so I'm giving them a trait that would belong to a human. So out of these four, I know that personification is when you give human traits to something that is not a human. And day four, so this is what we should have done Thursday. The first one asks us simple sentence or compound sentence. Mice, rats, squirrels, hamsters, and prairie dogs are all rodents. Well, I know that if I have a simple sentence, I'm just gonna have a subject and a predicate like normal. There's not going to be a whole lot of additional information. However, a compound sentence is going to be like combining two sentences into one. So looking at this information, this would be an example of a simple sentence. The next one, which of the following words are adjectives? So I'm looking for any word that would be used to describe a noun. So we have silly, bronco, silver, and frenzy. Well, I know that I can use the word silly to describe something. Bronco is a noun because it is a thing. Silver can be used to describe and frenzy would also be a noun because it is a thing. The next one, check if the word is a noun, verb, or adverb. Okay, so I have the word emerging. So I'm choosing between noun, verb, or adverb. I know that emerging is an action that could take place. So I know that an action would be a verb. And the last one, Write F for fragment and S for sentence. So on this one, we have been given phrases. We need to figure out if we have a complete sentence here or if we have a fragment, which would just be a subject or just be a predicate. So cute furry rabbits. Well, that would be just a subject. It doesn't tell me what the cute furry rabbits are doing. So this one's going to be fragment. Thieving raccoons. 
Again, I just see a subject here. I don't see what the raccoons are doing. So again, we have a fragment. The squirrels hid acorns. I see a subject here and I see what they do. So I do have a subject and a predicate. So this one would be a sentence. And then the last one, the leaves fell. Well, I have the leaves as my subject. Fell would be my predicate because it tells me what the leaves did. So this one is an example of a sentence.